In this video, we're going to be talking about speaking in other tongues. I have 22 years of experience in Pentecostal and charismatic churches. I've seen a lot of stuff when it comes to speaking in other tongues. Now, first of all, let's, let's define speaking in other tongues. The word tongues is actually an old English word that actually means languages. So when we say speaking in other tongues, it literally means speaking in other languages. Now, when Christians talk about speaking in other tongues, they are normally referring to speaking in other languages as God gives them utterance, okay? In Acts chapter 2, we read about the instance where the, the disciples were in the upper room, the Spirit of God came, and the Spirit of God gave them utterance to speak in languages they have never learned before. Now, I know of a gentleman who was in a church service, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he started making all these sounds, and it sounded like just, you know, like, like all this kind of stuff he started saying, okay? And, and, and there was a guy beside him who was Japanese, and he said, I didn't know you know Japanese. And, and the, the gentleman, it was an elderly gentleman, he said, I don't know Japanese. He said, well, you were speaking it. He said, I was? And he said, yeah, you were. He said, well, what did I say? And he said, you kept on saying over and over and over again, Jesus is number one. Jesus is number one. There we have an instance in the modern world where this has happened, where the Spirit of God came upon somebody and they started glorifying God in another language that they never learned. And apparently in Japan, it was a big thing to say, this is number one, or that's number one, or she's number one, or he's number one. So when this... When this gentleman, this elderly gentleman, started shouting out, Jesus is number one in Japanese, and he never learned the language, it was a sign from God, just like it was in Acts chapter 2. But before I tell you the other side of the story, let me give you a little bit of background into my own life so you understand where I'm coming from. See, I grew up in a home that wasn't a church-going home, and I grew up with my grandmother for the most part. My grandmother was... Uh, she was a, a Christian, but she never went to church. And uh, you know, one of her uh, relatives, closer relatives, uh, was a was a preacher. So she would go from you know time to time. She would go to church, you know, long before my time. She would tell me about stories of people speaking in other tongues. The work of the Holy Ghost is to and and kito. So you can each day balabasito and so I kind of grew up hearing, you know, the odd story about, well, you know, she said there's these Pentecostals and, you know, they, they do this thing called speaking in other tongues and, you know, and it just sounds like, you know, like they're just talking in different language and they, and, and you know, the odd times she would tell me the story. And, and when I heard that, like, I was like, you know, between eight years old and in my uh, early teen years, I thought, well, that sounds kind of unusual. I, I didn't know what to think about it. I, you know, and she told me that that story from time to time. Now, as a teenager, you know, my my father passed away when I was very young, and you know, he kind of held the family together. And as a teenager, I, I went wild. I, I I really did a lot of foolish things, a lot of stupid things as a teenager. And one of the one of the people that I knew was a guy who was an open Satan worshiper. He worshipped Satan. He was never saved, okay? He never claimed to be saved. But he said, you know what they do in Pentecostal church? They speak in tongues. And he would start speaking in what sounded like tongues. He, st he started speaking in tongues. Now, if he went to a Pentecostal church and started uh, doing that, they would say, oh, praise God, brother. You're speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. You know, oh, you got it, man. You got it. I'm, that, for sure, that's what they would have done. Okay, but this guy didn't know God at all. He was a Satan worshiper. And if you notice, if you see videos of people who are, 
uh, possessed by evil spirits. Sometimes these evil spirits speak through these people in different languages. I know it's you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look at me. So I break this curse. I break this curse. So I break this curse. I break this curse. Of Jezebel. Of Jezebel. How many generations this curse goes back? Ah. How many? Ah. Ten. 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 What happened ten generations ago? Ah. What happened? Ah. What started this curse? Older type guys. What? You, you don't understand that? No. Well, this goes way back. This is ancient Farsi. What's your story? How long have you been there? Many years. Many years. What have you done to her? She's a star. Yes. But you won't, so who are you to her? The father. Yes. Some of you are wondering, ah, but why is she? Why is she speaking in tongues? Speaking in tongues, all these things you are hearing, yakapa kapa, is not a sign that you are saved. You are possessed. There's a snake inside you, and this snake, this demon, always speak to you. That is devil in you. Name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. Hello. 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 Let's not be stupid and think that everybody who speaks in another language is actually speaking in tongues as per Bible, as God gives them utterance. And so at 18 years old, that's when God really got a hold of me. And I started going to uh, various churches. And there was this one church I went to very regularly. I was very, very faithful attending this church. And uh, this church was very strong on, on on speaking in tongues. And they they taught that everybody should, you know, should be speaking in tongues. And, and basically, if you didn't speak in tongues, then you didn't have it, okay? Hey, if you didn't speak in tongues, you didn't have it, okay? <laughs> I mean, you're kind of like a sub spiritual, okay? You you didn't you didn't attain that 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 height of spirituality. And so what they would do is they would call people forward and they'd say, who would like to receive the, they call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit. By the way, the baptism of the Holy Spirit can include speaking in tongues, but I'm telling you that it doesn't always have to be like that. In fact, most people that are baptized in the Spirit do not speak in tongues. It says very clearly in the scriptures that there are many parts of the body one person can speak in tongues while another person can prophesy. And then another person, their gift could be helping people, helping the poor, helping the needy, all kinds of gifts that God can give people. Not everybody is a tongue. The whole body is not a tongue, okay? So in this church, they would call people forward. Who would like to speak in tongues? And they would lay hands on people. And some people, right away, they would start speaking, you know, they start saying all this kind of stuff. And then uh, other people, they wouldn't. And they would, they, would, they would encourage them. They would be, actually, they'd be really pushy. They would say, okay, just start with one syllable. Ba, 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 ba. And then go to two syllables. Ba, ka, ba, ka, ba, ka. Then do three syllables. Ba, ka, la, ka, ba. 
baka, and then and then go home and practice. And they said, you know, when you practice it, then you become more and more fluent. Now that is not in the scriptures at all. You never see anybody taught how to speak in tongues. In fact, it's the opposite. It's people who have never been taught, never been taught how to speak this language, that they just spontaneously and instantly get that gift. And if you've never prayed in tongues, if you follow my instructions, the anointing is here to do the rest. I can't do it for you, but I can tell you how to pray in supernatural languages. So you start speaking like little baby words and say them as fast as you humanly can when I begin to pray. And when the supernatural will become natural as you take a step, Peter, of faith. Raise your hands to the Holy God and begin to pray in a language you've never been instructed. If you don't move your tongue and speak, no one else will do it. In I know you don't know what to say. Make little nonsense syllables up. They're not nonsense. But if the first words coming out of your spirit, do it faster. I said faster. I said faster. You can do it faster than that. If I had a gun in your ribs, you'd do it faster. So when you are taught how to speak in tongues, that is the first sign that it is fake. Unfortunately, there are a lot of Christians out there. And I wouldn't doubt it's 99.99% of all Christians who claim to have tongues. They're actually fake tongues. They have been taught how to babble. And what makes it even worse is that these people <laughs> believe that it's real. They believe that they have the real deal. I keep my hands in the air and I got my eyes closed and then I feel six hands all over my body and the pastor was like right in front of me and the two deacons each were beside me and each of them had their chins plural on my shoulders talking in my ear talking about receive the holy spirit receive it receive it receive it and, and the preacher was standing in front of me doing this on my forehead but i wasn't about to fall because i had this stance going on and then i just just did what any person would do in a situation like that i, f I faked it i I legit remembered and mimicked everybody I've ever heard speak in tongues to create the sickest freestyle Holy Ghost mouth moving tongue speaking freestyle these deacons have ever heard in their life. I was like, <clears throat> The craziest part about this story is that the deacons and the pastor were like, he got it, he got it, and they were celebrating, they were like, patting me on the back. I want to talk about and open up to you guys about the beginning of my walk and um, yeah, how I uh, faked and speaking in tongues. The evidence of being filled with the Spirit or baptized in the Spirit is not speaking in tongues. Rather, the evidence of being filled, baptized in the Holy Spirit is a holy lifestyle. Don't forget William Seymour, one of the fathers of the Pentecostal Assembly of God movement. In the Azusa Street Revival, this is where it really started sprouting up and speaking in tongues, okay? This guy, the leader of that revival, the leader of the revival that initiated this whole movement of speaking in tongues in modern day, he said, if you backbite, if you gossip, if you speak evil, he said, I don't care how many tongues you speak in, you do not have the Holy Spirit. Think about that for a second. Here is the father of the Pentecostal tongue speaking movement saying that if you do any of these things, if you use your tongue for something that's unholy, he said, I don't care how many tongues you speak in, you do not have the Spirit of God.
So you have to be very, very careful. Don't let anybody push you or don't push anybody else into receiving this gift. If it's God's will to give someone that gift, he will give it. It is a sovereign gift of God and not an acquired skill taught by men. Now, don't forget, I do believe that speaking in tongues is real and it does happen today. But I believe that the real deal, the real deal here is much more rarer than you think. And the scriptures say that if you do speak in tongues, you need to have an interpretation of those tongues. Now, if you or anybody you know of start speaking in a language that you've never learned because the Spirit of God gets a hold of your tongue and other people from other parts of the world can translate that and it's a real language, then guess what? You've got the real deal. Congratulations. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I know how people are in, in Pentecostal and charismatic churches. They claim that they get an interpretation by the Spirit too. So it's more like a prophecy than it is an interpretation. And I, I've seen this happen many, many times where someone speaks up and speaks in tongues and someone starts interpreting it. Mm, for the time has come for you to take some big steps. <laughs> big steps. And that interpretation is more like a prophecy than it is an interpretation. And if that person that's interpreting is interpreting a language that they don't know, then that even brings more questions onto the table. If they presume to interpret a language that they never learned, then that makes it even tougher because then you have to test the interpretation. You have to ask yourself, does this interpretation sing the same song? Is it the same tone, the same tune as the whole entirety of scripture? from Genesis to Revelation. And that's another whole subject for another video, discerning false prophecy from true prophecy. And the scriptures are clear. If you are gonna speak in a language that you've never learned, that you don't know, then it's very, very important. Actually, it's vital, it's essential, it's mandatory that you have an accurate, and I stress accurate interpretation. Here's something you probably never thought of. In Acts 2, Verses 1 to 4, the apostles gathered in the upper room. When the Holy Spirit fell, the apostles spoke in tongues they never learned. In Acts 2, 5, it says there were people there from every nation. That means that, most likely, there were people there from which is now known as the British Isles. That means that one of the tongues that the apostles spoke in was an old form of English. Therefore, it is possible to speak in tongues in English. Don't think that just because they speak in English, they are not speaking in the Spirit.